In this video, we're going to look at the idea of scatter plots and a line of best fit. So this is a way to um, look at and think about analyzing your data. So, um, so scatter plots and line of best fit are the main idea. Um, I'm going to read this paragraph. You can pause and read it to yourself if you want to instead. So it says, the owner of an ice cream shop wonders if more ice cream cones are sold on hotter days than on cooler days. To see if there is a pattern, she records the outside temperature and the number of cones sold for 17 days. So you can think about what you might expect to happen in this case, but so she had a question, she's investigating and collecting the data to answer this. So we'll take a look at this spreadsheet in just a second, but basically just to kind of think about the question here, what this person wants to know is if we look at the temperature, how does that impact the number of ice cream cones sold? Um, so I, and you might have your, your ideas here. My guess is that as it gets hotter, people buy more ice cream. So I would expect the line to, you know, do something like that without, I don't know what numbers are involved, but I would expect that as it gets hotter, more ice cream cones are sold. So we will see what the spreadsheet shows. Um, so you can take a look at this spreadsheet on your own too, and kind of follow along with what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and open this spreadsheet and go through this process in Excel. So, um, and again, if what I'm doing is slightly different than what you, you, you need to do, um, it is possible there would be some slight differences in the Excel that you could always look up and, you know, look up other videos to help you get, get through doing that part. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share the Excel document and then I will just be going through these steps without necessarily, you know, coming, having you see the directions here. So if you have them in front of you on the workbook pages or anything, you can always look at it there. Um, all right, so let me share the Excel spreadsheet. And what we wanna do, so we have the data over here and we have column A tells us the temperature, column B is telling us how many ice creams were sold when it was that temperature. Um, so what we're gonna do is make what's called a scatter plot. So this is going to plot each temperature and the number of ice cream cones sold as a specific point. So first thing I did is highlight all my data. I will do that again. So I clicked down here, kept holding the left button down and dragged all the way down to this corner so that both columns are highlighted. Um, it helps to have what you want in the horizontal axis to be first, So and that's the way it is. So we have temperature first, ice cream cones sold second. Um, so now I'm going to insert a scatter plot. So it looks, Basically like this is what I want. I just want it to make dots for each individual point. So I'm going to do that. Um, we can add some details to this graph, but this is the main idea that we want. And just to kind of check, like this is saying that when, 90, when it's 93 degrees, 45 ice cream cones should be sold. And it looks to me, so that is that matches up to that point. So it seems to have done what we wanted to. Um, one thing I think is very helpful to do on here is to just label what the axes are. So if somebody, um, didn't know, you know, didn't know exactly what was going on here, they could look and get a quicker picture. So um, I just clicked on this plus sign and then I checked off the access title box and then these spaces appeared down here for me to type. So this is the temperature, um, oops, temperature. And just to be a little more specific, maybe I'll call it degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then on the other side, we're looking at the number of ice cream cones sold. So I double clicked on that box and then I'm gonna type my label here, number of ice cream cones sold. Um, and so that, that just gives a little more good information to our scatter plot. So the first question in the book, I'm just gonna keep this page up, but what it says that once the scatter plot is made, uh, number 1B says, um, select the point in the scatter plot that is furthest to the right. So that would be this point. Um, position your mouse over the point and the coordinates will show. So that's what I've done here. And it says, use the X and Y values to fill in the blank. So what this means is that when the temperature was 96 degrees, 50 ice cream cones were sold. So I'm going to go back to the, the workbook questions, but, you know, have a good picture in your mind of what's going on with this scatter plot um, and kind of in general how it looks. And I'm going to Switch back so you can just see what I'm writing up for the workbook pages. All right, so part B um, is what we were just talking about. So this showed us that um, by hovering over that last point, when the temperature was 96 degrees, 
we had 50 ice cream cones sold. Um, look at thinking about what that graph looked like, I would say overall, in fact, you know what I will do is copy it into here so we can at least have a picture of the graph to look at. Um, so I will just put it right here. Whoops. I'm sorry, I'm trying to move the graph, not move the, there we go. Okay. Um, let me just slide that back down so things line up again. Um, so what trend can be observed in the graph? So overall, I would say the trend is like we predicted, as it gets hotter, as the temperature increases. So as the temperature increases, more ice cream cones are sold. And you could phrase that different ways, but that's the main thing you want to get at here, that as temperature increases, the number of ice cream cones sold also increases. Um, this asks, if the points were connected, would the result be a perfectly straight line? It doesn't look like it. And you, I can just draw a line here. So, I mean, we can get, you know, pretty close to all the points if I draw a line, something like that. But it it doesn't quite connect them all. So there would be no way to connect all these points without making some little zigzags. So, so no, we could say it is similar to a line, but it is not a perfectly straight line. Or I'm sorry, it, it is a straight line. It is similar to, uh, let me let me phrase this better. Um, so no, a line can come close to all the points, um, but we cannot, connect all of them with just a single straight line. All right, so we are going to actually come back to this graph in a couple minutes, um, but we have some other questions interjected here. So let's take a look at those. Um, this paragraph has some important information. So it says that if we have a line in the form y equals mx plus b, this is what's considered to be slope intercept form because the slope and the y intercept are easily identified. The slope is right here. So it's this number that comes in front of the x. It doesn't have to be an x, but you often it's an x. So it's the coefficient of the variable, um, of the independent variable. And the slope describes the rate of change. Um, then the y-intercept is the constant. So it's the number that's by itself. And what this actually means is that this is the point at zero, that there, the y-intercept is going to be at zero comma b. So it's the value of the dependent variable, which is often y, when the independent variable is x. Um, our graph actually be, doesn't include zero, like it starts at a temperature of 78 degrees. But we could imagine if we found this line to, the, to fit our data nicely, kept that line going and going and going until we reach x equals zero, that would be the y-intercept. Um, all right, so what we're going to do, so this is an important equation to know, to keep in mind, to think about what these different numbers in there mean. Um, and we're going to just do a couple quick examples with identifying slope and y-intercept. So if you want to try these on your own, I would recommend that. Just pause the video for a minute, you know, get try these questions. Um, so we're going to find the slope of each line, and we're going to find the y-intercept in each of these lines. So part A, slope is the coefficient of the independent variable. So in this case, the slope is equal to 3. Um, slope has that symbol m, so it's also fine with me if you just wrote m is equal to 3. Um, the y-intercept is the constant, so it's the number that's by itself. Um, you want to pay attention to what sign is in front of it also. That's true in both cases. So in this case, our b is equal to 5. So the y-intercept is going to be at 0, 5. So it's always 0, comma whatever. Um, so that is for part A. Um, part B, we can do a similar thing. So we're looking at the number that's in front of the independent variable. So our slope is equal to negative one half. 
y-intercept is the constant, so the number that's by itself. So that is 6 in this case. So um, I'll just write b is equal to 6, which means that the y-intercept is at 0, 6. Same idea in the next one. Um, 2 is the coefficient of the independent variable, so that is our slope. And notice what um, the slope is just the number. I'm not including the x as part of my slope. Slope is just 2. Um, I'm just going to draw a line here to separate those better. Um, so slope is 2. Here's our y-intercept. So the y-intercept is the number that's by itself, the constant. So in this case, that's a negative 0 0.5, which tells us that the y-intercept so we've identified B. If we want to list the y-intercept as at the point that it is, negative 0, comma, negative 0.5. Um, last one is tiny bit tricky here. So we only have one part on the right-hand side. So y equals negative 4.8x. So that negative 4.8 is multiplying by our independent variable. So that, that's our slope. So the slope is negative 4.8. In this case, nothing is written. Like there's not a plus anything here. If there's nothing, we could think of that as being a zero. So it would be a plus zero, meaning our B is zero, or in other words, the y-intercept is going to be at zero, comma zero. Um, so that's some quick practice with just identifying the numbers that are the slope and the y-intercept. Um, we're going to do that in the context of this ice cream cone equation too, and then think about what those what that slope and y-intercept mean. Like, what are they telling you in the situation? All right. So, question three. I'm going to go back to the Excel spreadsheet in a minute here, um, because what we want to do is find the line that best fits our data. So it's a straight line that represents all the data points. Um, so it basically tells you the trend that's happening. So just going back up to the little copy I made, and I did my own rough estimate of what that trend line would be. Um, so we're going to have Excel do it much more accurately. So I will show you. So again, the, some directions are here. You might also want to look up some videos to, you know, just help you with the details of this. But I will show you um, one way, you know, how I can get the trend line drawn on here. So I'm going to switch back to sharing the Excel. And what I need to do once I have that spreadsheet open again is click in my box uh, where the graph is, click this plus sign again, and down at the bottom it says trend line. So I can click that, and you can see right away a trend line appeared. So that dotted blue line is showing me the line that comes as close as possible to all the points. So it's kind of an average result for the temperature versus number, or I'm sorry, number of ice cream cones sold versus the temperature. Another thing I can do, and your, um, the book gives actually some a different way to do this, but I'm just going to show you one thing real quick. If I have my trend line and I go to more options, um, what I can do is click on this thing that looks kind of like a bar graph, and that will let me see the equation of my line and the R squared, which is something we'll you may, might talk about more later. Um, I'm just going to put it up here so you can see it a little better. So that is the equation of that dotted line that it just drew. And what I'm going to do is actually copy this whole thing into the slides, just or into the the notes that I'm writing, just so you can, you know, we can see it and talk about it more easily. All right, so I'm going to switch back to sharing the notes, but the main thing we did here was click in the box. We got this plus sign. We made the trend line. And then I also did more options in order to get the actual equation of the line. So let me go back to the where I'm writing. All right, so I have the, I just put the little snapshot of the graph that we had from Excel. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger anyway. Um, so it says, does the line of best fit, so that dotted blue line that we have, have a positive, negative, or no slope? So just quick reminder, positive slope goes, you know, as one thing increases, so does the other. So this is positive slope. If it goes 
downwards, as you work left to right, this would be a negative slope. And then if it is a flat horizontal line, that would be a slope of zero. I'm not going to be able to draw a perfect horizontal line, but I'm just going to say that this would is meant to be a horizontal line. And this has a slope equal to zero. So this line definitely fits the positive slope description. It's going as temperature increases, so does the number of ice cream cones sold. So part B, we can say it has a positive slope. Um, and that makes sense here because this means as the temperature increases, the number of ice cream cones sold also increases. So the number of ice cream cones, number of ice cream cones sold also increases. All right, so we actually are, so it says to find the slope and intercept of the line of best fit, a process called regression is used. So we will not do that process of regression by hand. That is actually what we did already with Excel to get this equation. Um, they're also telling you to use this other site called alcula.com. So I will um, show you how that works. And with, with this site, we can just copy and paste our numbers from Excel into it. So I'm going to go to the Excel sheet first, and then I'll go to this alcula.com website, and we will get the equation of the line there too. So I'm going to go to this spreadsheet. And they give you the important note here that when you copy the data, you're just copying numbers. So I'm going to copy like this. So I got it all highlighted. I left clicked in the where the 93 is, kept that button down, dragged all the way to the 20. I'm going to control C. And then I'm going to go to the Alcula website. So um, let me share that screen with you. And right here it says enter the XY values. So that's where I'm going to control V. I'm just going to paste the numbers that I had, submit the data. And sure enough, it's, it's, it's scaled differently than the Excel spreadsheet. So it looks slightly different, but, um, but we have our um, trend line. We, you know, we see all the individual data points. We have the trend line. And right here it tells us here's the Y intercept, here's the slope, and here is the regression line equation. So I'm going to um, just take a screenshot of this. And it gives us some extra information too, but the key things we want are the slope intercept and regression line equation. So I'm going to go back into the notes and paste this in there. So then we can answer the other questions that they're asking us. So this is this um, screenshot from Alcula instead. So again, similar, similar concepts to what we saw in Excel, but just you know, slightly different scaling, different, pro different proportions. Um, but the slope and the intercept will be the same. All right, so part B says, use the results of the regression to write the equation of the line of best fit. So that is this equation, um, but they want things rounded to the nearest hundredth. So just two decimal places instead of the many, de many, many decimal places that Alcula gave us. So I'm going to say that y is equal to, so 2.318, I'm going to round to 2.32x minus, so it's a negative sign in front of the b, 171.80. Um, and if we just go back up to the screenshot I had made of the Excel graph, that's the same thing we got there. I mean, it rounded differently, but same values if we round them. Um, all right, so this is our equation of the line of best fit. So the slope of this equation is that number that's in front of the independent variable, so that's 2.32. Um, and what that's telling us in this context, so they want this contextualized sentence, um, so this tells us that for every degree warmer it gets, two point three two more ice cream cones are sold. So 
So in general, I'm just going to come down to the bottom where I have a little bit of space. Um, when you're interpreting the slope like this, it's always saying for every change of one, so that again, in this case, that's one degree, you're, you know, your one might represent different things, but for every change of one in the independent variable, the dependent variable, so here our dependent variable was the number of ice cream cones sold, the dependent variable changes by, and here you would put the slope value. Like, so that's how slope fits into a contextual meaning. It's telling you how much the dependent variable is changing for every change of one in the independent variable. All right, part D, again, if you need to pause and process, think, make some notes to yourself, go ahead and do that. Um, otherwise, part D, we'll go on to that, is asking for the y-intercept rounded to the nearest hundredth. So our y-intercept is, um, let's see, right here. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 171.80. Um, so what this means, again, thinking about what that means. So 0 is telling us the temperature. Negative 171.80 is telling us how many ice cream cones are sold. Um, so I'm going to just come down here and answer this part about does it make sense. So for part D, we have 0. So this means when the temperature is zero degrees, degrees um, negative 171.80 ice cream cones are sold. I would say this does not make sense because how can you sell a negative amount of ice cream cones? Um, so this, so in this case, I would say this does not make sense in the context. in our situation um, because you can't sell a negative number of ice cream cones. Negative number. So it's also true that, you know, the temperature doesn't go down to zero that much. Um, so what might kind of make sense here, like the reason this doesn't make sense is because maybe this, this model, this description of the ice cream cone sales applies for summertime temperatures or something like that. So, so this, that goes beyond what they're asking here. So for this question, we could just say something like, does not make sense because we can't sell negative ice cream cones. Um, but just to keep in mind, maybe the model we came up with, the equation. So the, when I say the model, I just mean the equation really. Um, works for summertime temperatures. Not, not for all the time, not for extremely cold temperatures, something like that. So that's something to just keep in mind if you do a statistical study and you're looking at a linear trend, it's rare that that trend is going to literally go forever, you know, so so that's something to think about is how, when does your model work? When does it not work? When does it make sense? When does it not make sense? Um, I think, let me just check. Oh, and then one last question here. So that was the last question about the scatter plot. Um, question number five is really for you to think about. So it says um, this activity introduced several new terms. So we talked about a scatter plot where we plot the points, a trend line, which is the, the line that best fits to those points. Um, we talked about regression, which is the process of calculating that, you know, figuring out where that trend line is. There's going to be some more new vocabulary and things as we go through this, as, as we go through more lessons. Um, so how will you keep track of it? So again, this is a place to put your ideas. Um, but just, you know, maybe you want to make flashcards. Maybe you just want to keep a note, page, you know, a, a set aside a page in your notebook. Um, Maybe you'll do some kind of digital organization. So like a Google doc, a Word document. Um, so I'll just put like organized on a computer or a phone or whatever. Um, so, you know, whatever is going to work for you, but there are going to be a fair amount of words, some formulas, you know, some things like that, that you'll want to keep in mind. So thinking of a good way to organize that can definitely be very helpful. 
And that is all I've got for this lesson. So I'm going to stop for now. And thank you again very much.